Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're good to start. Okay, so most of you have probably been through, I recognize a lot of faces. I think you've been here before. Um, but just to remind you, yeah, I know you have. <laughs> um, so just to remind you, we're trying to make this as interactive as possible, right? So make it easy for me. And when I, when I ask for volunteers for questions, please rush at me and, and take the questions. We've got this very neat microphone, which is like a safe thing for me to throw around the room. And you just speak very closely into this to ask questions. It's great. It's great fun. You really will want to ask a question, if only just to use this, right? Um, so you, if you haven't already, you need to go to slido.com on your smartphones. And it's hashtag deliver is the, the reference to get through to our questions. Now, this is going to be a very, very exciting workshop. There's some empty seats over here, guys. If you, there's, there's a couple here. There's one over there. So there's about three, three more seats this end. OK. So I'm going to introduce Tamir from Brink, tech business. Really interested in what these guys are trying to do. Um, he's got a presentation, including a video. And then we'll throw it over to Slido, and that's where the interactive part goes. So, Tamir, over to you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, quite a crowd, so it's pretty cool. Uh, thanks for, for joining uh, the session. Uh, I love the fact that it's interactive, and then we get to you know, uh, share questions, answers, opinions. Uh, it, it's great, so please uh, don't be shy. Um, but they, why are we here? Why are we all in, in Lisbon in, in Deliver? And, and I think th this is a big reason of why we're here. Right? We've all been disrupted by, by something, something, someone. Someone that's called the customer. Right? And we've been disrupted by customers who suddenly got the appetite for more. Right? Whether they want better experience, right? whether they want more transparency, more control, more convenience. But why do they want this better experience? What triggered them to want this better experience? And suddenly they woke up and they said, hey, I want to get my goods in one hour. Or has it built up to that? If we go back in the days, customers were very happy just to go to a market, being offered, a, I don't know, a, a black and white TV. Right? And they'd go home, they turn it on, they have one channel, and everybody's happy. Things have changed. We provide them more options. We said, hey, you know what? Now you can have color TV. You can have 100 channels. And suddenly they have options. So now they want more. And now they can go get a Best Buy. So they go to Best Buy or, or, or you know, your, your local uh, retailer, and they can go and look at the different uh, options and, and choose the best one and take it home with them. And wow, they're happy. But guess what? Then came e-commerce. And now they can go online, look at the different options, read customer reviews, then make their selection by press of a button. They buy their products. Wow. Amazing. But guess what? Now they can even have options as far as their deliveries. Right? I can get it in a week. I can get it maybe two days. Maybe I can get it same day. And these customers, in fact, these demands, were not something that they just came up and says, oh, I want better service. I'm going to go and ask my retailers for it. In most cases, it was us. It was the businesses that fueled those demands, right? that provide these options to remain competitive. Right? You want to offer better options. You want to offer better service. And you start competing. So whether you're competing on features or on your service, the fact is that you are competing and you're pushing each other and the customers to want more. And by doing so, you now have to start offering those services, whether it's more delivery options, geo coverage and peak coverage, right, to, to fulfill those demands and provide those services. You need to be better prepared for that operationally. And to do that, you need visibility not only for the customer, because that's what they ask for. They want to know when their goods are going to get there. But also internally, in order to be able to make decisions and provide them that level of service. Right? So really, it's us that dis disrupted ourselves. Right? 
we're providing that. And when we looked at a different uh, surveys out there, we say that the last mile is really now a critical differentiator between the different options. Okay? In fact, 97% of retailers agree with that. Okay? The, the last mile right now is where the difference is because the customer cannot come to your store and experience the goods in your store. Now the customer experience your brands on how it's delivered to them. Whether you're just taking it to their house, dropping it off and saying good luck, or bringing it over the threshold and installing it and teaching, and then taking the old goods back with you, it depends on the level of service. Right? Whether you're delivering groceries, maybe you want to deliver the extra service and put it over the threshold, or food, you can just go drop it off and run away, or go wearing the uniform of Domino's Pizza or, or whoever, right? and provide a little bit of a different service that your brand offers to your customers. So it all comes down to that last mile and the different options that are provided. And this is the age of Amazon. <coughs> I'm Tamir Gottfried. I'm the Senior Vice President for Operations at Bring. And what we do is we actually help retailers and help our customers deliver that level of experience, deliver that optimized operations for, the, for, a, for your businesses so that you can meet these customer demands. Before we go into the Q&A session, what I'm going to share is, is a, a short uh, video of uh, one of the retailers in the US that deployed our technology to deliver a better experience for their customers. Bring's delivery logistics platform provides retail chains with the most efficient way to manage their delivery operations. Let's take a closer look at the Bring solution in action. Customers place their orders on the retailer's website or app. The dispatch team pre-plans the delivery routes using Bring's route optimization technology. The routes are determined based on multiple parameters such as store inventory and proximity to the customers. The routes are then optimized based on the retailer's goal, whether it is to reduce overall mileage, limit the number of orders per driver, or maximize deliveries per run. In addition, dispatchers can set time windows for order delivery in certain areas during specific hours of the day. Once the routes have been optimized, the orders can be automatically assigned to the drivers. When demand is high, retailers have the flexibility to fulfill orders via multiple transportation options. They can deliver using any combination of their own fleets, their store employees, and third parties, such as local logistics providers, national 3PLs, or crowdsourced platforms, which are integrated with the Bring platform. At this point, a text message is sent to the customers, letting them know that their order will be delivered at a predetermined time frame. Drivers begin their shift by clicking Start Shift in the Bring driver app. The drivers can then see the full list of orders assigned to them. When drivers start an order, the customers receive a text message telling them that their order is on the way. The customer is able to track the driver in real time so they know exactly when the order will arrive. Drivers have access to all the relevant customer details on the app, including precise GPS-based navigation to the customer's address. Once drivers arrive at the customer's location, they click Arrived on the driver app. This can all be done completely hands-free using geofencing technology. At this time, a notification is sent to the customer, letting them know that their package has arrived. After the drivers deliver the package and collect the customer's signature on the app, they click Complete Order on the app. The order then disappears from their list and the next order is automatically started. After they receive their delivery, customers receive a text message with a link to rate their delivery experience. During the delivery process, managers at the store and at headquarters have access to real-time information, such as which drivers are on shift, what is the status of each delivery, and how many orders are en route from every store in a specific area. They are notified in case there are any problems, such as deliveries that are running late. Using Bring's reporting dashboard, management can analyze a wide range of data, such as total time and distance, late orders, customer ratings, and other customizable views. With Bring's delivery logistics platform, retailers can streamline their delivery operations, making them much more efficient and cost-effective through the use of real-time visibility, optimal driver performance, and exciting customer experiences. So again, one, a, one example of, of a retailer in the US with about 5,000 stores uh, nationwide 
that decided to actually use delivery or to deliver using their own employees, as well as external fleets uh, to augment that service. Uh, so this is just an example. Um, yeah. Brilliant, let's, let's <laughs> kick off. That, that was amazing. Um, I'd seen the video before, I've seen the slide presentation before, but it, I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't realize it was, it was as, as simple as that and, and, and compelling as, as that is. I've got a couple of questions before we go into, into slide, if you don't mind, to me. Okay. Um, so that example, 5,000 stores, they've opened up their employees. Does that mean their employees can earn extra money by volunteering to be a, dri a delivery driver and they've got an app which they then they, they sign in and sign out and... Um, how do they, does the, the system automatically allocate um, deliveries for them once they sign in? Or do they have to sign in, let's say on a Monday, that I'm going to be available on Thursday and populate it there, or is it real time? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So there's different uh, business models uh, that can be used for that. So in some situations, uh, the, the, the st store associates, in fact, sign up for delivery blocks that they want to get extra, extra cash on. So they know their shift ends at, uh, I don't know, uh, 6 p.m. And then between uh, 6 and 8, they, they, they want to go around making deliveries. That was one option. Another option is to pay them extra so that they can make those deliveries on the way home. So now by signing up to the program, the system knows this person is available. This is going to be their route. What orders can I do that are within that route and certain parameters within the route so they can be comfortable uh, for their, you know, on the way home? Right, so they won't have to go out of the way to make those deliveries. And the, the other option is during the shift, being able to actually go and now switch roles instead of being behind the cashier uh, and start uh, ringing up uh, customers, uh, maybe it's low peak, and the store manager will assign an associate into a delivery job. Mm -hmm. And then they would go out and make deliveries. Uh, we've had that application also done in the food industry with, the, with one of our customers that have, uh, has about 2,000 restaurants uh, in the US. And over there, they actually use a little bit of a different model. So they'll take delivery personnel that were hired to do deliveries, and they get paid X plus tips. And now, they, when there's no deliveries, they'll repurpose them to work within the restaurant. And because they cannot earn tips while they're at the restaurant, they will give them a higher wage. So it's a bit of a reverse mix, right? Instead of taking an associate and making them a, a driver, take a driver and make them an associate. So in that case, they actually use those drivers to do simple tasks, such as clean tables, you know, et cetera. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And the other question was, one of your latest slides talked about the current supply chain not being sustainable or scalable, I think was the, the word you used. And you had a 97% stat at the bottom there. Are you saying that, that, that you see the future that everybody will switch to this kind of um, almost Uber-like, agile, final mile delivery model? Is, is that the point you're trying to make? No, I think it really depends on the business, right? It depends on the business and depends on, on what their customers, what your customers are looking for. Um, whether the same hour delivery or same day delivery fits every business, probably not, mm -hmm. yeah? But where the future is, is going to is more options. And today, the traditional models of operating are not geared towards providing these options, right? And that's going to be the complexity around scaled operations. So yes, you can take one city and probably you know, come up with a strategy for that one location. But when you're looking to scale that across multiple regions, multiple geographies, with multiple partners, multiple skill sets and capabilities, it becomes that much more complex. And then at scale, it becomes a real issue. OK, really interesting. Right, um, before I go aside, has anybody got any burning question they want to ask following that presentation? I'm going to put this one down. OK. Can we have the first um, slide of questions? You know what to do, guys. The question will appear on here. Um, use your phones, respond. When we've got to about 30, we'll then flip it to the, to the answers page, and we'll see, see what you all thought. So the first question, number one out of 10. So we've got quite a few to go through. Do you see Amazon as a threat or as an opportunity for your business? <coughs> very, very simple. Is there anybody from Amazon in the room? How cool! By the way, I love Amazon. Yeah. I, you know, if I if there was no Amazon, I'd probably get divorced because my wife keeps on ordering, and then it makes her life that much easier to get the goods. I think with the age of Amazon, Amazon they're, they're, they're the benchmark, right? Yeah, they're, they're the ones pushing the envelope further. 
So, 34. Can we flip to the uh, response? Threat. Uh, okay. So, the opportunity, I'm really curious about this. So, 40, so, so circa around about 15, 16 of you feel this is an opportunity. Can somebody be brave enough to, to expand upon that? And they get to me to throw this at you. Yeah, how cool is that? Go on, there's at least 15 of you. <coughs> Brilliant. Hello, <coughs> Sebastian from Forecraft, and we cooperate with Amazon, and they give to us uh, easy expand to new markets without a lot of um, invest, 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 investment. Okay. So, so you leverage their infrastructure, their marketplace, and their warehouse capability to enter new markets with low cost. So you haven't got massive step increases in capital, you can do it quite smoothly. Yeah, so for example, if we have, um, for example, if we have uh, around 200 uh, parcels orders per month, it's much easier to start with Amazon and grow to some level. And they're open with triple uh, partners own warehouse or something like that. Okay. On the, the threat, the group that, that see Amazon as a threat, is there, there's obvious, you know, retail, they're very dominant, they're scaling. What was it this morning? Something like 767 warehouses in the States now, you know. Um, does anybody want to just go a specific issue that's perhaps a little bit um, less obvious as to why you see them as a threat? I'm curious. Yep. Okay. Hi, Nono from Farfetch. Uh, the threat is just, I think it's the first slide. Uh, basically, maybe they are giving services that the customer are not asking, and basically this become uh, the normal one, so we need to adapt to that. Uh, and it's more that than uh, being a competitor. So what you're, what you're saying now, they're disrupting, not just retail, but they're disrupting logistics as well. And it's really interesting, you know, Amazon's driving force originally was uh, a sales platform, you know, books, CDs, DVDs, and so on. And now the driving force is difficult to call, you know, is it, is it distribution? That they're phenomenal at getting product from a warehouse to the door, you know, within an hour. And they just mastered it. So interesting point. But your issue is, is that they're a disruptor. And because of that, but... Isn't that kind of a good thing? Because that means we're, we've all got to think a little bit differently. We've got to be a bit more agile. We've got to come up with new solutions and new ways of doing things. Yeah, I suppose. But OK, can we have the, yeah, uh, the next if question? If I can comment on yeah. that too. Oh, oh you, you've got so, it. So for, uh, for us at Bring, at least, um, it, the, the obvious thing to say is that, yeah, they're a threat. You know, they're disrupting. They're, um, in, in some markets, they come in and like, oh my god, I didn't have a competitor before, and now I have a competitor. I'm, I'm the only one in, in, I don't know, in, in Timbuktu offering e-commerce capabilities, and suddenly Amazon comes, and, and then I have a competitor. Uh, we really see this as an opportunity for different reasons. Uh, a is, is some companies are positively impacted uh, by, by Amazon, uh, you know, another business coming in, driving more demand, you know, or, or serving more demand, and so forth. Uh, so that's ob an obvious opportunity. But the other opportunity is to improve ourselves. Right? Uh, customer needs are changing. And, and whether they're changing in the terms of, of uh, you know, the, the, the standards, the new standards that Amazon is setting, and then everybody kind of have to you know, stand up to them, um, which some, by the way, are not. They're trying, and then they're failing, and then they're, they walk <laughs> away from those. But, but when they are sticking, it, it makes us realize that what are we not doing right for our customers? We need to start thinking, putting Amazon aside, when can we look at our companies, right? internalize the process, and think, what can I do better? What can I serve better to my customers? Or, or how can I manage my business differently? Ignoring Amazon for a second, where I can elevate that, that experience for my customers, where I can drive better operational efficiencies. Right? Amazon controls end-to-end -end the full process from the time the order is placed to where the inventories are. And, and you know all the way through to the customer experience. Right? But what can I do as a business now to be able to compete with that, or, or, or forget compete with that, but offer that kind of excellence? Right? 
So the way we see it is, is this is actually an opportunity for a lot of our customers to internalize the process and think, okay, what can we do different before Amazon comes into our market? Yeah? And when we're looking at, the, at what happened in the grocery space, for example, in the US, before Amazon, nobody was really concerned about delivery. Yeah. You know, in the grocery space. No, there, there were some companies that were very specific doing uh, grocery deliveries where it's Fresh Direct or Peapod. I think they were the ones offering grocery deliveries. The US, by the way, is far behind Europe when it comes to grocery deliveries. But it's only then when, when Amazon came and acquired Whole Foods that it made the rest of the grocers really realize that there is an opportunity there, that there is a market and there is a need for deliveries. Right? Without even Amazon starting the deliveries way for Whole Foods, but just by them entering that space, they start thinking, is it a threat or is there really a market for me to serve? So we see it as more as an opportunity to, to take the process internally and think what we can do differently. Brilliant. Next question's up there. Let's flip it and see what the responses are. So the last mile, critical differentiator to drive revenues, but current last mile models are not sustainable at scale. Let's see what you thought. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That, it seems like you've sold it to them. They agree with you that actually the current, the current way uh, is long-term not sustainable. Yeah, I, I don't think it takes selling. I think uh, when, when you're looking at the business and, and you're realizing where you are and, and where you need to be, it's really easy to understand that the way of operating needs to change. And when you're looking to change it again, taking care of it on, on, a, sl on a, a smaller scale, mm. right? whether it's a store, a city, a district, a country, it's, it's somewhat controllable. Well, when you're looking to do that, the same level of service across your enterprise, across your different uh, regions, that's when it becomes a problem because then you have to deal with multiple delivery partners, uh, multiple inventory situations and information that you need. You need to really communicate with multiple systems that you have throughout your... Mm. So yeah, so, so looking at that scale is, is really the, the current models are not sustainable. I'd like to ask, um, so one of the 84%, that's quite a lot of you, at least 40 of you in the room, felt that. I'm curious, is it, as, as retailers in the room, did that case study, the video, did that excite you and start getting you thinking about what you could potentially do? I want to hear from somebody who, was, who perhaps heard this solution for the first time. It's a little bit, you know, Uber, Uber meets the last mile, isn't it? So I'm going to quote Uber, but... That's kind of what I got from it when I, when I saw it first time. So volunteer to, and there's at least 40 of you, so to share with us why, why you agree with that and, and did the video stimulate some thoughts? Anybody, yeah, right, ducks. Uh, right. From Metro, we don't do e-commerce in Europe, but we do it in China. And when I hear, you know, for example, that, you know, now, of course, you know, you, we talk about next day delivery, same day delivery. Now the standard in China is 30 minutes delivery. Hmm? So you ask yourself, I mean, this is what the customer expect in China. No, they're becoming so lazy that you, you work at the 20th floor, you don't go to the convenience store because it's cheaper to, I mean, you don't, you just order and they take it from, to you. You order one euro, it comes free of charge. So this is what is happening in China. It can happen everywhere. But the question is, is it possible to make money out of that? That's the real question. So I, I don't believe I'm in it. How long have you been in China trading? Uh, well, the company, 20 years. I worked there for four years. And uh, I can tell you that I saw in four years moving from next day delivery to same day delivery to two hours delivery to 30 minutes delivery. It's all with this application, so it's all, you know, this Uber-like, small um, moped and people that are working for nothing, and uh, you get it. In probably next will be 15 minutes, I don't know. With drones, I don't know. <laughs> I saved you that. Um, okay, can we have the next uh, question, please? Okay. While we're waiting for that, do you want to just respond to that point? I mean, that's fascinating, that how, how quickly, just four years, it's gone from two day, next day to 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and by the way, to answer that, those 15 minutes, uh, 
there are companies out there that can provide 15 minutes delivery. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, we piloted uh, that same thing uh, with uh, Coca-Cola. Okay, so Coca-Cola is, is a customer of Bring. Um, the reason why they can do 15 minute delivery, and by the way, Amazon is also trying uh, different things, but the, main, the reason why they can do 15 minute delivery is because their products are essentially in every corner of the world, right? And now it's a question of how do you get to those products without visibility and technology? So the model that they went after is, is taking participating partners, these retailers are in every corner, mm -hmm. in, you know, in a, in, a, in a location, providing an e-commerce app to customers. And in fact, the advertising was done in South America. The advertising that, that they did on, on the TV campaign was you're sitting down for dinner, you run out of Coke, oh my God, what do you do? You go and uh, you, you select the, the Coke product that you want, small order, maybe a six pack of Coke Zero, right? Now through Bring, we find the right partner within that 15 minute delivery radius, walking distance, yeah? And then dispatch or send a request to those vendors in that region, the first one that grabbed it, kind of the first one that grabbed that, that order, now can walk that over over to the customer. 15 minute delivery window. So it's becoming a reality, but not everybody can serve that. Not every customer has that need. That need comes more in the food uh, business, uh, some other uh, businesses that we've seen it as well. Uh, but uh, it's there, and, and again, depends on the business model, the time, the, the SLAs will continuously get that much more difficult and challenging to meet. And the big challenge is how do you make it while still not losing money? Mm, definitely, well that links to uh, the second point here, you know, offering deliveries at a cost that makes sense for both sides. Um, it's interesting, you know, all the above, no real surprise there. You know, when we put that list together, I thought, you know, honestly, they're, they're all relevant. It's uh, difficult to pin one that's not, but clearly, you know, everybody wants to offer a fantastic service. It's the cost prohibitive nature of it that is the challenge. Yeah. Uh, um, how are the economics working as, as much as you can say? Obviously, there's commercial sensitivities, but for some of the clients that you're, the, you, you're onboarding, you know, is it, is it viable or is it sort of swallowing the, the nettle now for, for long term? Yeah, so the, the profitability from this, or say that they're not losing money on it, a lot of companies right now just don't want to lose money on, on the delivery business, um, comes from scale. Yeah, uh, and, and a big part of that is, um, and I'll use a basic example, you're a retailer and now you're going to use the, the crowdsourced third party to deliver on your behalf. That delivery is going to probably cost you five euros, right? Give or take. Mm. But if you had your own person doing that delivery, and maybe that person would cost you, I don't know, 15 euros an hour or whatever it is, yeah? But if you can use that person now, instead of just going out and doing one delivery at a time, which is essentially what you're doing with, with these crowdsource vendors, but if you can ba ba batch several orders into this route and now use, and we've seen customers using associates as the video uh, showed, doing about seven deliveries in that hour, okay? That's where you get the, the economies of scale. That's where you get the benefit, right? So if you don't wanna have your own associate, you can find that delivery partner that will take more than just that one delivery if you're doing on demand and if you're doing multiple deliveries and find the right partner that will do it by the optimal route. So there's ways to go about it, but, but I think that the critical part of these answers uh, well, yeah, obviously making money on both sides, but the visibility mm. is, is the most frustrating part. Because when you're using third parties to deliver on your behalf, or, vi or even your own people, if you don't have the right technology in place and you don't know what's happening during that last mile, that's when frustrations happen. The customer calls your call center and says, hey, where the hell is my order? Mm. Right, and then and w what happens? So, uh, I, by the way, Every Sunday night, I sit with my kids in the basement, we order pizza, pizza and movie night. And then, trust me, I have a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a three-year-old. That pizza is not there in 30 minutes, and havoc breaks loose. I mean, it's crazy time, yeah? So I call my, my local shop, and you know what? They, yes, I use Domino's. And I call Domino's, and every, every week, same thing. You know, take two large pizzas, one, one plain, and one mushroom. And you get the full experience, and it's beautiful. They have the gauge, it's in the oven, it's out of the oven, it's in the box, eh? it's with the delivery, and then it goes dark, <laughs> right? Then you have that bar, delivery bar. And you don't know what's happening in that last mile. And if it's not there, and after, after you know, five more minutes went by and the driver is still not there, 
I call Domino. And I say, hey, John, this is Tamir. Where, where's my pizza? And all I hear is this, oh, hold on one second, Mr. Gottfried. And he's like, hey, Jose, have you seen the order that went out to Tamir? Did it already go out? And what? You know, and it's like, whoa, great, because they have no visibility either. <coughs> right? But when I order from Uber and I can track the driver, I know it's on the way. And frustrations go down. I'm not too concerned of do they have my order or not. Yes, I saw it pick it up. Oh, he's probably stuck in a traffic light. As a customer, my frustration level has just gone drastically down mm -hmm. because I have visibility. As an operator, I don't have the calls to take care of. And when I do, I have the information in my hand and I can provide answers to my customers. Fascinating. Excellent. Right. Uh, next question. Hello, Anton. Um, OK, so uh, do you offer multiple delivery options to your customers? Delivery any time next day, customer, if you ever choose a time, same day, click and collect, and we plan to offer options by the end of the year. So respond to that. We'll wait till we get to Thursday, and we'll flip it. Um, so any th thoughts on this in terms of with your clients, with, it, with this sort of agile model, it, is there a, do they focus generally on, on harnessing a retail network and running same day using staff and the app and so on, or next day, which of these are more dominant? Yeah, it, it really depends on the business, right? And we, uh, we serve customers across the field from food delivery to retailers and everybody offers different services. I think same day is still a, a nice to have, but customers are, are still adopting to that same day delivery option. Next day is really becoming a reality. Two days is also is obviously there. Amazon is now pushing the Prime members for, for free same day delivery, right? So mm -hmm. they're trying to push the envelope. But I think what's most important here is not necessarily providing same day, next day on demand or whatnot, but it's really providing the options, right? Customers want options. In fact, when, when we looked at some surveys, say that 70% of your customers will leave your, will, will leave, uh, your, your e commerce site if you don't provide them options. <coughs> right. So it's quite significant to offer these options and let them choose. Strange. Is the app working? There's only two responses, which seems a bit odd. Maybe the Wi Fi is. Uh, the Wi Fi here is not great, it keeps dipping in and out. So. Pardon? Okay, we'll talk amongst ourselves. So, um, so who do you, this is a difficult question, who, who's, who's your biggest competitor? It, it's an interesting question. There are a lot of technologies out there, right? A lot of the technologies are offering specific point solutions. You need a driver app, there's a technology for that. You need a, a route optimization engine, there's great technology out there. Uh, you need a customer experience uh, application, there's a, but there are point solutions. What Bring offers is really a full orchestration with all the different capabilities. So from the moment the order is captured until it's delivered, it's providing all the interfaces into the different platforms, it's providing all the communications. And so at that level, there, I, I think today uh, there's very, very few competitors there. Um, and, uh, and essentially what we're offering is the ability to compete with Amazon and providing that type of, of technology mm -hmm. for obviously much, uh, much cheaper than what Amazon invests in their technology. So long answer is uh, there is currently very little competing technologies to offer a full orchestration platform, which is what Bring offers. Okay. Right, we've got the responses now. So uh, that's interesting. 33% we plan to offer more options by the end of the year. Interesting. Can I speak to one brave individual who wants to expand upon that? In terms of, I'm curious, what options are you providing? What's driven that? Is it customer demand? Is it a faltering service? Uh, have you changed supplier? I'm going to pick on somebody. Sir, what's your view? There you go. Hi. Uh, I'm Oriol. I came from Spain. We do sell wine. Until now, we were offering a lot of options in Europe because it's, we, we didn't have it in Spain, but from last year, not like my this um, man in China, but from last year in Spain, change uh, changing, and now we can offer same day delivery, night delivery, pick up at uh, up, uh, or shop, of course, and uh, next day delivery. But our clients are not using it uh, right now. Uh, but yes. 
Sorry? So they take the adoption rate for yeah. this one? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Not in France. 80% uh, of our deliveries has been in, in the collect point. Uh, in German, we use a lot of, um, I don't know how to say it in English, uh, lock boxes. Oh, yeah. uh, um, pack station. Pack station, but Spain is going very low, slow. Different countries, different cultures, different ways. I know uh, click and collect has been big in France for years because a lot of people live in apartments, it's not so easy and, and so on. Okay, yeah. So, uh, Zuplas, Anton Steinberger, and uh, the problem we have is we act in 30 countries. We have 14 fulfillment centers, and the moment you buy, we don't know yet where the parcel is going to be produced. So, therefore, it can be next door, if you're living next door to one of our fulfillment centers, it can be the other side of Europe because of the different SKUs we have in different uh, fulfillment centers. The fast turning products are always close to you, but the slower turning ones are not. So if you buy two bags of dog food, it'll be around the corner. But if you buy a collar for your dog at the same time, which is only sold once in two years because it's a very exclusive product, then it comes from somewhere else. We only build one parcel, so it comes from another fulfillment center. And that's why we cannot predict any delivery time or anything the like. But we want to go in this direction, definitely, and that's why we're looking for, for new solutions, for creative solutions. Also trying to change our IT, the parcel building, to make the carbon footprint lower, to produce closer to the customer, and therefore we will be able to introduce these services now. But in the past, it's been very difficult because of the structure. And all the players on the market, they do not offer, they only think in country clusters. And therefore, you, you, you cannot sort of say, okay, you're 300 kilometers away, you'll get a next day delivery because if there's a border in between, no way. It's going to go to the next hub, it's going to come back from somewhere, you're going to ship from the Polish border into central Germany, that it goes back to the eastern border of Germany, whereas between the two addresses of the fulfillment center and the customer, there might be 30 kilometers, but the parcel travels 800 kilometers or so, and that's what the, what the parcel providers have not understood yet to, to, to really get this a, a customized solution for us for international shippers. Yeah. And, and, and if I can just uh, yeah. address that, and, and we've seen that, and, and that goes back to, to the scale of operations, right? The, a lot of the, the 3PLs today, they're, they're built on traditional business models. They're not built on these types of situations where inventory is allocated is located in different uh, parts, different countries, and so forth. Uh, in fact, we are dealing with one uh, tier one a 3PL, global 3PL, that is now challenged with exactly solving this problem is, is how do you provide that visibility and real-time information, and maybe if it's estimated if you need to do cross-border, but if it's within the borders, but fulfilled from different centers, how can you do those calculations in real-time so while the customer is on your checkout screen, they are provided the options. Um, and another option is actually pick up at store, right? Uh, so buy online, pick up at store. Yeah. And that's the technology is what enables this essentially. But Okay, that's interesting. I mean, this, this distance issue has always been an issue for, 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 for years in the way those, those most parcel companies are structured. You know, each, each country is a, its own profit center and cross-border and so on. So I think it's, it's we mentioned, you know, about disruption. Uh, it, it's ready for, for somebody to disrupt it in some way for sure. Okay, the next question's up there. So um, please get on your app. Uh, this is a simple yes/no response. This one. Um, so, you know, the slightly difficult question I asked you a moment ago about who's your competitor. You know, when I get asked that question, you know, I'm a strategy consultant. So I said, my my competitor actually is apathy. It's people who just continue doing it the way they've done it because that's the way they've always done it. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you think that's true for you as well? In that the default setting is to is to use a, a post, a, a parcel company. A, and just continue to do that route? Yeah, I, I don't necessarily think it's, it's apathy or, or a lack of making a decision. I think uh, companies today are faced with making a decision. I think the, the challenge there becomes more, do I buy something or keep what I have and try to modify it versus do I make that leap and go into something that is up with technology or current with technology, I should say. I think that is the biggest challenge that, that uh, some CIOs face. Um, and uh, and uh, the, the way to obviously overcome that is is, is educate and teach, right? But uh, but a lot comes from that. Uh, we have something that works. Why change it, right? How can I adopt it? Um, uh, that that's one of the challenges. Okay, so a very even split here in terms of uh, mm. yes, some user. I, I, 
I'm assuming it's the, the ones that choose to use a single provider. It's maybe easier that way. Maybe you get a, uh, a better price because they've got all your volume. If you split your volume, maybe they'll, they'll play the price game with you. Um, anybody want to make a comment about that? It's, it's pretty self-evident. 50-50, it probably feels about right. Anybody got an, a, a burning desire? You're smiling, is that for any reason? Or? Yeah, do you, you want to? Yeah, cool. Hi, uh, my name is Mark from uh, Takeaway.com, the food delivery company in Europe. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm part of the 9% owned drivers. Okay. So uh, we, do, we make an explicit choice to do everything ourselves. So we have thousands of drivers now in Europe, uh, even on our payroll, uh, because it's our core business. We are a platform for food delivery and we deliver the food. So why would you outsource that, what is your core business, by which you can't control it anymore? I mean, I heard the name Uber, and we have more competitors in the food delivery market in Europe. Usually the ones, in our opinion, that outsource their delivery is just very bad quality from a consumer perspective. Usually they have outstanding technology, so that makes up a lot for uh, having the customer experience you want. But still, you know, it's also about if you, if you order food, you want someone in front of your door that smiles, that says what you would like to hear, that is clean, that is fresh. So we, uh, although it's very expensive, it's a hassle to have thousands of drivers on your payroll, but we explicitly make the decision to do it ourselves. Uh, okay. Let's see if it's scalable. That's always the question, but uh, yeah. How many markets here? We are now in, uh, I think it's 12 or 13 countries. All in Europe? Yeah. I'm in Israel as well, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then we see them. We have customers, uh, some of our customers are, are the, the biggest brands in the world, like. McDonald's and, and others, and they use multiple fleets. And the reason, in, in some places, like in the US, they partner with Uber, right? Exclusive with Uber for, for some time now. Uh, and others are following suit for, for one reason or another. But a lot of them are experiencing a situation where some of the, of the delivery uh, providers for them don't give them the national coverage that they need, right? And that's when they start relying on, on other parties to help them provide that same level of service across the board. Bring, by the way, is an agnostic and unopinionated platform. We have integrations with, with Uber, with iFood, with Logi, with, with uh, Stuart. With, with pretty much we're, we're open to integrate with anybody. Yeah? Uh, we don't have drivers, and, and therefore, when our customer comes and says, hey, we want to deliver, said, great, who are your delivery partners? Mm -hmm. yeah? And how are you going to cover the area? And then it's based on their business logic that a delivery is assigned to one delivery company versus another. Mm. That, was, that was one of my uh, sort of backup questions, if, we, if, if needed. So you do... Do you white label your, to provide the tech to a parcel company or a post or, or a courier so yeah. they can? We do that as well. Okay. We do that as well. Uh, some uh, companies, they obviously, um, they, they're in the delivery business and then they want uh, their brand on the, on the customer app or, or, or driver app and so forth. So yes, we provide that. Uh, a lot of our customers also, they have native apps, right? Uh, where they want to provide their customer experience on their own app, uh, such as their Mac delivery. Um, yeah. And so when they're using a third party deliveries for them, provided that the third party has the technology that can let us track their drivers, then we can feed that information back to that native app. And then it's again, if it's a delivery as a service only, then they can control the full experience, customer experience, and provide that Uberized type of experience on their own native app. Cool. Okay. Yeah, let me check this out. Okay, my name is Claudia. I work at Coty um, perfumes. Um, look, you were saying that uh, your strategic question that uh, companies hesitate between upgrading the system they have or buying something totally new. Is there the risk that in five years technology has to be totally different again because we've seen so many differences in the changes in the last years, few years? What's the risk you buy something now and it's outdated? in five years? It's a great question. I think the, the bigger risk uh, comes from building your own. When you're, and obviously, okay, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a technology company, I'm gonna say that, but when you're building your own, then, then you, uh, you run several risks. Number one is maintaining a platform that is not core, uh, your core business. Your core business is selling perfume. So now you're, you're building a system and you're counting on the people that build that system to maintain it and keep it up with technology. So when you change partners, you have to change interfaces to your partners, right? Uh, delivery partners. When you upgrade other systems, you have to make sure that their interfaces work with other systems and so forth. So there's the ongoing maintenance that you need to do as a company, right? If you manage, if you build your own or maintain an old technology. 
I think what you'll find is that most companies are offering technologies today, uh, whether they're cloud-based or, or other on-premise, uh, they, they provide a technology that is easier to maintain and upgrade. And they keep up because it's a technology company and it's meant for building software. They keep up with the technology demands, they keep up with what's happening in the market. And therefore, that operational cost essentially translates to them to maintain their service and their technology to remain competitive in the market. Uh, the easiest example I kind of used it earlier is interfacing with, with the delivery providers, right? With, with delivery companies for you. If you have to maintain those interfaces constantly, you will be constantly matching up onto their interfaces, right? What companies like Bring provide is essentially a single interface into one platform, and then that platform worries about the different interfaces to make sure that they remain intact. Okay, brilliant. Because of time, we've still got a few questions. Tamir, can you just uh, respond to, to this rather than go to the audience? Hey, what is the main benefit of using technology to improve on operations? I, I think the, uh, the main benefit is visibility. It's operational visibility. Without visibility, you cannot make decisions about your business. Without visibility, you're, you cannot offer your customers uh, information as to their order. So visibility is key to also understand and know different problem, uh, problems or, or uh, inefficiencies that occur in your business and can help you improve. So for me, that is the, the key. Great, no surprise there. Okay, right, so next question. This is an interesting one. Um, it's about the last mile, yeah. Okay, do you think the ability to, to have centralized control of your last mile operations is a strategic opportunity? So this is the, uh, to quote to me, it, this visibility point, you know, that you have that control. At the moment, if you, I guess if you give it to a carrier, depending on what, the, what, what, what systems and dashboard availability the carrier provides you with, you're limited to whatever they can give you, right? Um, I don't want to lead you, so I'll shut up. And uh, yeah. let's flip that and see what the, uh, the response is. The Wi-Fi here is not great. I'll just tell a few jokes while we're, <laughs> we're waiting. It's not the guy's fault. They just push a button. It's, it's, it's the system. By the way, it's not at all off-putting when you get up and walk out. It's like doing the best man's speech at a wedding. And people start leaving halfway through. You think, oh, it's going bad. It is very warm in here. I know that. I've got to wear this bloody jacket, right? But you don't think it's too bad? Oh. I'll, I'll put it out on the pole. Who thinks it's warm in here? Yeah. Okay. You know, maybe I can address that quickly. Um, with the, the centralized view is important. Today, a lot of information is, is, resides in silos, right? Different platforms that you have in your, in your uh, organization, and the information remains within them. Now, to make a decision, you really need access to that information, essentially in real time, to act on that information. And when it's not centralized, when, when it's not there in one place, then it's a challenge. Yeah. How do you know where your inventory is? How do you know uh, if the customer paid their bills and you can send them that order? How, mm. you know, uh, how do you know where they, a lot of things are happening there? And so when everything is centralized or, or brought to a single repository, that's when decisions can take place. Yeah. Okay. I think we've got a technical hitch. So I'm going to verbally ask this next question. So ha have you considered leveraging your physical store footprint, right? for a buy online, purchase in store, or ship from store. This is his harnessing of the store network. So if you've, okay, that's that one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll move on to my question. So we'll poll the next question. Let's just do a show of hands quickly. So who, who here has a significant store network? And are they leveraging that currently? Thank you. Can you can you repeat the question, please? Have you considered leveraging? Right, so here it is. Yeah. Have you considered leveraging your physical footprint of stores yeah, for a buy online purchasing store or a ship from store solution? Yes, definitely. Um, I was actually talking with Jer uh, Jerome from the first, uh, oh, yeah. from the first workshop uh, on this topic. So having uh, we do sell, we, we are an omni-channel. My name is Pedro. I'm from Vorten. It's, uh, uh, we sell uh, electronics. We 
having the roughly the same uh, assortment in the stores next to the clients and um, uh, as the one we sell in the in the web stores is a great advantage so this is a definitely definitely a yes so we've done most of the way to the customer so why not uh, leverage on that so yeah. definitely why uh, yes <laughs> okay, uh, so question nine. I'm very conscious of time. We've got a couple of minutes left, so let's uh, quickly race through this. So are you looking at technologies to help you optimize and automate your delivery process? Yeah, I think it's... Uh, uh, I sure hope so. Yeah, <laughs> you, you'd hope so, yeah? <laughs> okay, so no, no surprises there. Um, can we have the final question? So what are your main concerns when it comes to using technologies to manage your delivery operations? Choosing the right one. This is a little bit your question, right? That, you know, if you, what if you go with somebody and their, their systems, they, they don't uh, modernize and update, and, and before you know it, you, you've backed the wrong horse. And your response was, better to use a third party who specializes in this than try and do it yourself. Okay, so have a look at those responses. So to me, from your point of view, you yeah. know, closing, closing remarks, yeah. you know, wh where do you see the next two years? If you have a crystal ball going forward, um, you know, is how, how significant do you think your proposition or others that are out there like yours, is it going to really disrupt the current sort of courier, postal, last mile space? I, I don't think, I think the disruption already occurred. Yeah. And I don't think we're the disruptors. I think we're providing the answer to the disruption. Right? That, that's, that's how we, we look at it. Um, the technology that, that companies such as Bring provide enables, whether it's the 3PLs or the retailers, to provide and meet those, those, uh, those requests or demands. When I'm looking at, at technology and, and, and the specific questions and the concern that comes with, with deploying uh, these technologies, I think the, the really important point and then the and it's a really important point that we see every day with our customers is choosing the partner that not only has the right technology, but knows and has the experience of deploying that technology. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of CIOs today, what they fear is getting into a never ending project. Yeah. You're coming out there, you're trying to deploy a technology, and a year later, when you're finally deployed, the needs changed. And that's when you get into that problem. Right? The needs change. Our philosophy at Bring is get you to the market, to the field, as fast as possible with a minimum viable product. We get you operational within weeks because the experience that you get from the field is tremendous and that will impact the, the, the rest of the deployment and how you scale. Because if you try to be in a closed room and plan everything and then go out to market a year later and deploy it, you will fail 90% of the time. So if people want to come and find you today, tomorrow, where do they find you out there? Where's your So your we, we have a, a little uh, stand for, for meetings and the entrance on the left okay. side. Um, we'll be there, uh, myself and my colleague, uh, Alan. Alan, raise your hand. <laughs> okay. uh, we'll be there, and uh, yeah, we'll be there today and uh, tomorrow. Great. Or you can also, Tamir at bring.com. It's always easy. Brilliant. Tamir, thanks for your time. Thank you for taking part, guys. Thanks.